Welcome to Maths for All, I'm Ashley Flynn. This is Measure 1.5, Surface Area and Net. Surface Area and Net. The total surface area of a 3D shape is the total area of all the surfaces added together. It can help to imagine the 3D shape opened up or flattened out when calculating surface area. The shape created when a shape is opened up or flattened out is called its net. Let's start with a cube. The cube has six faces or surfaces. Each face is a square. All the edges are equal in length and all faces therefore have equal areas. So if we were to imagine that was a cardboard box and we open it out and put a flat on the table, this is what you might see. Okay, uh, you have six squares opened out flat. Okay, uh, you see that the bottom here is separated from the top of the box by the front and left is separated by one to the right and front and back. Okay, there's our six faces, front and back, top and bottom, left and right. And it's called a net. Actually, there are alternative nets for a cube. Here's one, there's another, and there's another. Okay, in total, there are 11 possible nets for a cube. Uh, here's an example. A cube has an edge length of eight centimeters. Calculate its total surface area. Okay, so we imagine the net. Um, we have six faces. Each of them are shaped like a square, meaning their length and their width are the same. So for each individual face, its area is eight times eight, which is 64 centimeters squared. And we have six of those so multiply by six and get 384 centimeters squared. Cuboid. This is a cuboid. A cuboid is a box shaped object. It has six rectangular faces. Opposite faces are equal in area. It may also be called a rectangular solid or it could be called a rectangular prism as well. Okay, here's a net for the shape on the left. Okay, so we can see that, okay, that front is the same size as the back. Okay, and they're separated by one face. That the top is the same size as the bottom, separated again, and that left is separated from right, and they're the same. Okay, the two red lines here indicate that um, when you refold the box, those two lengths should be equal. Okay, so in some questions, they leave out one of the measurements and you must uh, figure that bit out. Now, here's an example. Calculate the total surface area of the cuboid above. Okay. So take them in pairs. The top and the bottom are the same size. The top is 20 times 5. Okay, so the long by the short, 20 times 5. And so would the bottom be. So that's 2 times 20 times 5, 200, gives you 200 centimeters squared. Front and the back. So the front is that large side. It's 20 times 12. And so is the back. So 2 times that. We get 480. And then left and right, that's the smaller side, uh, are 12 times 5, and we have two of them. So 2 times 12 times 5, and we get 120. So the total surface area will be what you get when you add those three individual answers. We get 800 centimeters squared. Okay, cylinder. Cylinders have a circular cross section. What's a cross section? Imagine that cylinder there is a Swiss roll and you cut it into slices, or it's a piece of salami. You cut it into slices and the resulting shape is a circle. Okay, the curved surface area of a cylinder, so curved, um, is around the sides where the label is on a tin of beans. So imagine a tin of beans 
Whereas the label, it's around the sides. It's the curved part, not flat. When the label is removed from a tin of beans, it is rectangular in shape. Okay, so the net of a cylinder should look like that. So you have the top and the bottom, which are circles, and then the label of the tin of beans, or the curved surface area, which turns out to be a rectangle. Okay, and if you were to calculate the total surface area, well, you have two circles, pi r squared and pi r squared, and the rectangle. So the height of the rectangle will be given by your height of your tin of beans, and the length of the rectangle will be given by the circumference of the circles, 2 pi r. And when you multiply length by width, you would get 2 pi r h is the curved surface area of the, the label part, the sides of the tin of beans. Okay, so here's an example. Calculate the total surface area of the cylinder shown. Okay, in your formula and tables book, this is what you'll find. But please note that it gives a note in the following A represents the curved surface area. So the area formula only gives the result for the curved surface area. So not the top or the bottom of the tin of beans, just the label part 2 pi or h. So if you're asked for the total, you'll have to add in the top and the bottom also. So the curved surface area, 2 pi r h, is 2 by 3 by 1, 4 by pi or r. In this case, the radius from our picture is 5 and the height is 12. So calculate your job there, 376.8. Now you must add in the top and the bottom, which are two circles. So 2 pi r squares. Okay, and our radius there is 5. I got 157. So the total surface area, or TSA, you add the two answers and you get 533.8 centimetres squared. Okay, next is a cone. Cones have circular bases. And if you have made a party hat before, you know that the curved surface area of a cone is created using a sector or part of a circle. Okay, like so. So it's not the full circle. And when you Fold it over, you make a cone. So the net of a cone is made of a circle for the base and a sector for the sides. Okay, that's what the net of a cone looks like. So to calculate the total surface area of the cone show. Okay, um, we are given the dimensions. The radius is 5 at the base and the straight up perpendicular height is 12. Okay, now if you go to your formula books again, it will give you a formula for the curved surface area. Okay, so it says A equals pi or L. Okay, so R is the radius at the base, but L is the sloped length. Okay, and that's important. Pay attention to how the picture is labeled. And notice that we do not have that information in our question. All right, so curved surface area is pi r l, but we do not have l. However, we have a method to find it. If you look at your diagram here, if we look at our cone straight on, we have a triangle here which has 90 degrees at the base here. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem uh, with 5 and 12 to find this hypotenuse. Okay, so there's Pythagoras' theorem. Pause that there if you want to go through it a little bit slower. And we got for our hypotenuse 13 centimeters. So that is the sloped length on the side of our cone, 13. And we can put that into our formula for the curved surface area, CSA, pi by R by L. And I got 204.1. Okay, pause that there if you want to review it. The base is a circle, pi r squared. R is 5 in this case, and we've got 78.5. Add them together to give your total surface area of 282.6 centimetres squared. And finally, we have a sphere. Okay, a sphere is ball-shaped. 
okay if you have ever unwrapped so your terry's chocolate orange or tried to wrap like football something that is spherical with a flat piece of paper or foil you will know that it is difficult and the paper will have lots of folds in it so the sphere does not have a net that we can draw the curved surface area of a sphere is given by the formula a equals four, 4 pi r squared and again that's found in your formula book whenever you need it okay so we're going to use that information to answer this question of a compound shape compound shapes means uh, more than one different shape stuck together the picture shows an oil tank that needs to be painted on all faces calculate the total surface area of the tank to help with ordering the paint now it said all faces, so we're going to include underneath the base, the sides, and the curved top. Okay. So we have a circular base formula. So always write down your formulas um, in the exam. If you choose the correct one, you're gaining attempt marks already. Okay. Then if you substitute correctly the right numbers, you'll get more marks even if the final calculation does not work out. Okay, so for a circular base, that's what we get, 50.24. The curved side of the cylinder, 2 pi r h. So from your formula book, okay, uh, pi is 3.14, r is 4, and the height is 12. And we got 301.44. And finally, the curved um, surface of the hemisphere so a hemisphere is half of a sphere okay so it'll be 4 pi r squared divided by 2 so we've only got half so that will be two times instead of four times pi r squared the radius of course is the same as the radius given for the cylinder because it sits exactly on top we got 100.48 to answer the question you add the three individual answers we got 452.16 centimeters squared Okay, time for you to do it um, with your quiz and your written exercises. Here's a glossary.